Today we're here to talk about force matching, specifically the 180 force matching procedure. Traditionally we use data set arms to measure the run out of the rim and then the machine can calculate the optimum position for the tire and rim to get the lowest road force values. General Motors prefers that we do what we call the 180 matching procedure. And what that is, we measure road force one time, then we turn the tire 180 degrees on a tire changer and measure again. That then allows the computer to calculate the optimum matching marks. So we're going to show you how to do that today. So you'll see here in this case, uh, this is a 22 inch assembly from a Tahoe or Suburban. And it's, uh, it's failed and I've got 26 pounds of road force. Current bulletins want us to get to 15 pounds or less. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to press the measure rim runout button. And you notice it defaults to using the data set arms, but we don't want to do that. We want to match without rim runout, so I'll press that button. That is the 180 matching procedure. And you'll know because it says 180 matching, and we see a bar here showing me my progress in this guided procedure. It says mount the assembly, set the tire pressure, um, which we've done, and lower the hood to take the first road force measurement. So let's do it. So now it's completed its road force measurement. It'll say bring the valve stem to, and, or to top dead center, which I'm going to do here using the hammerhead laser. And I say enter valve stem. Now it says put a V on the tire opposite the valve stem. You notice it turned the tire for me. I'm going to use this yellow tape so you can see it a little better on camera. And there's my V. So now it says press OK. We've done that. And it says remove it and let's go ahead and take it to the tire changer. All right, so here I am at the Revolution tire changer. I've got the tire mounted up, the assembly mounted up. I've got the air let out of the, of the assembly. And I've got my mark that I made on the balancer, my tape mark here, which is 180 degrees opposite of the valve stem. So what I gotta do here is break the beads and bring those together. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I brought my mark together, mark to the valve stem, I should say, I'm going to go ahead and reinflate the assembly. Now here's the real reason why I chose the Revolution, because now I'm going to perform a bead massage. Now any tire changer with rollers can perform a bead massage, but the Revolution will do it for me automatically. The purpose of the bead massage is what we're going to do is you'll watch the roller is going to push down on the tire and turn it a couple of revolutions. And you'll see it's pulling that tire away a little bit. What that's allowing to happen is for the beads to seat better onto the rim, okay? This is gonna lower my road force readings, which is very important, but also in this case, when I'm going back and forth to the balancer, it's gonna make my predictions more accurate because if the beads aren't seated, the machine can't know that and that's gonna end up as error. So this is gonna improve my chances of getting the right result. Okay, so now we took our first road force measurement. We took the tire, the assembly to the tire changer. We turned it 180 degrees, and you'll see now that our uh, tape matches the valve stem. I'm gonna remove this now so that it doesn't confuse us because we're gonna make a couple of additional marks. Following the instructions on the screen, it said turn the tire 180, which we did. Mount the assembly on the balancer, it is. Position the valve stem at 12 o'clock and say enter valve stem. So there's my 12 o'clock, enter valve stem. Now it asks me to verify the tire pressure. And because I came from the tire changer, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now I've completed that. Pressure is good. Now it's going to, I'm going to lower the hood. What it's doing now, it's going to take a second road force reading. So now you can see that it's telling me the assembly is at 25 pounds, and I can get to 13 pounds. All I have to do is put a mark on the tire here. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to mark the tire at top dead center. My piece of tape right there. And then I'm going to put a mark on the rim in this position right here. And now we're going to take these to the tire changer, bring those two marks together, massage again, and see how we do. Now we've just returned from the tire changer. You can see we brought our matching marks together. We performed a bead massage. Now let's go ahead and drop the hood and perform a verification spin and see how we did. Now I've already set the tire pressure, so I'll say yes. I want to re-emphasize that it's important that the tire pressure be kept the same throughout the entire procedure, otherwise that will induce errors in our measurement. So now the load roller is performing the road force measurement to see how we did, and we ended up at 12 pounds. 
So now we took an assembly that was doing, was relatively bad and made a good assembly out of it. So this is a, how we go about performing the 180 matching procedure. Here's how we perform the 180 matching procedure on a generation three road force balancer. The first thing we do is go into the main balance screen. And from that screen, we're gonna go down one key row and we're gonna press the show runout and force matching button. So now what we're gonna need to do is measure the runout of the rim. Now in this case, we're instead of doing that with data set arms, I'm gonna press the runout and matching button to take me to that screen. But instead of doing that with data set arms, in this case, I'm defaulting to the 180 matching procedure. Had I not done this previously, it would have come to this screen right here, expecting me to use data sets. If you've come to this screen, press match without rim runout, that will allow me to do the 180 matching procedure.